Hello! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this simple little unit. I've got a single drawer and this is designed for the um, craft workshop project and that's going to sit over there. So the measurements I've used um, are to fit inside here but obviously it's just like quite a basic little unit that you could use in other projects. And slightly different for this project, instead of putting the cutting lists here in the video, I've put it down below in the description. So you can copy that and paste it um, into Word, whatever program you use to be printed off. OK, and coming up next is what you'll need. So a suitable wood, such as a beche, um, lime wood or basswood, a Swan Morton craft knife and a size 10 a blade. You'll need a steel rule, that's obviously for measuring and for cutting your wood along um, with the knife. A nice sharp pencil, you'll need an eraser and a suitable glue, I like this Gorilla Wood glue. Cocktail sticks to apply the glue and remove from along the joins. A mini pin drill, um, 2.5mm or 3mm wooden draw knobs, masking tape and scissors, and then your choice of wood dye, varnish or paint. And a selection of sandpapers, um, some fine grades and a medium grade. OK, let's get started. OK, so you want to begin by cutting all of the pieces apart from the bits you need um, for the draw. And I always advise to construct the main body of the unit first and then measure and cut for the draw. Because if you slightly misplace this, this shelf piece, um, which is sort of the bottom of the draw shelf, um, then the draw, the draw sizes will be different. So I've given the measurements in the cutting list, but that is just as a guide. So always construct, measure and then cut your draw pieces. And they'll only ever be a little bit out, but it's just worth doing because then you get a much better fit. OK, so we're going to begin by drawing lines across the back and the side pieces. Um, so turn those around like that. I'll start with the back piece. And first of all, we're going to make um, a measurement um, 12 millimetres or uh, 15, 30 seconds of an inch from this what will become the top edge. So 12 millimetres from the top edge. I just want to do a little pencil line either side and then you can turn and join that up. Place your ruler just below the pencil marks just to allow for the thickness of your pencil although that should be nice and sharp. And then we're going to make another pencil mark at each side 7 millimetres from the bottom and that's nine thirty seconds of an inch. Seven from there. And again, join those up, turn it that way so the ruler doesn't rock over the edge. Like that, and then we want to do exactly the same again um, on the side pieces. And I'm laughing because there's a little squirrel just turned up to say hello. Oh, and just bobbed out of the way. There he is. <laughs> right, let me just grab him a few nuts. Now this is a new um, squirrel, and I haven't named him yet, so perhaps you might have some suggestions. So he's not too keen on taking the nuts from me yet, so let's see if he'll do it this time. Move back! Move back! I'm not quite sure how the window works. He's a little bit shy of me still. Hopefully you'll get used to me. Okay, so let's get back to what we were doing. So, side pieces, same thing again. 12 millimetres from the top. 
that's 15, 30 seconds. And then seven millimeters from the bottom. And that's nine, 30 seconds. So do that on both side pieces. Okay, like that. And then take those two side pieces and we want to make a pencil line now just below this bottom line and three millimetres or one eighth of an inch from what will become the front edge of each piece. So do a little pencil mark, three mil just below that line and three mil from the bottom there. And again, join those up. So this is for where our plinth will begin. So it needs to be then on the opposite side on this piece. So three millimetres again from there. And then join that up. And that will become clear as we begin um, construction. And then for that same purpose, take what will become the bottom piece. And then we want to make a pencil mark three millimetre from what will be the front edge. And this will be the underside. So three millimetres again, one eighth of an inch. Little pencil mark at either side. And then join those up. And then that will be the bottom. So that will sit in there like that. That will join on and then our, we'll have somewhere to line our plinth up with. Okay, so let's begin construction. So I've got some glue here on a piece of card using a cocktail stick to apply it. I'll just get rid of that ruler and pencil. Okay, so apply a line of glue along the long outer edge of the back piece. And lay it down on your work surface and join the side piece to it, making sure that those pencil lines are lined up and therefore the top and bottom will be as well. Like and then just press that into place and just hold it for a moment or two. And then you just want to, I mean this, this um, Gorilla Glue is really good because it'll, it'll take um, within sort of 30 seconds. But you don't want to start trying to attach pieces before that amount of time as it'll all just fall apart. So always just give it a bit of time to start drying off. And then we're going to join that top piece into place. So these three pieces are the same size. The piece we've marked up will keep for the bottom. So just take one of the other two pieces and apply glue to one short edge, one long edge. And then you want that to be exactly straight with the top of that back piece and then push it into the corner and bring your side piece in to meet it. And again, let the glue start to take and then you've, you've still got a little bit of time to go along with your finger and just make sure that those joins are square. I'll knock them out of position like I just did. Pull it all together, you can see the glue seeping out there as I'm sort of pushing it together. Nice and firm. So you want a nice flat edge on the top there. Push it all together. If you've got any gaps that's because it's not quite touching so you just want to squeeze it all together. Like that. Then we're just going to get another cocktail stick. Take away that excess glue. I'm going to be using a wood dye on this piece and that's the sta same sort of principle um, with with varnish although perhaps not quite, quite not quite as bad sorry um, but you do need to be careful about glue residue because the wood dye especially the darker colors won't take over the glue and you'll have those horrible patches so 
we'll, we'll construct this, removing the glue as we go along, and then we'll give it a good sand before sort of completion, just to remove any excess glue. Okay, so we're now going to stick our shelf piece in, so that's the other unmarked piece, and we want that to sit just below that pencil line. So again, um, one short edge and one long edge, and then glue that so it's sitting just below that line. And you might want to turn it round and just have a peep in, make sure you can just see that line. And then we'll put the um, bottom piece in, and we want this pencil line to be on the bottom. So stick that, and that sits just above the line. And that line is hidden underneath, like the other line will be hidden inside the drawer. Like that. Again, give it a good sort of firm press, but not too much that the whole piece sort of collapses in your fingers. I've done that many times. Remove the excess glue. And from inside as well, because well, this is an open shelf, so we'll be able to see inside there. Okay, now we're going to attach the plinth, and we want that to sit just sort of behind that line, but maybe just covering a little bit so we're not going to see it from the front. It just gives a nice little detail, a nice little lip on there rather than just having a flush straight front. And it's actually um, like a bookcase I've got in here. That's where I got that idea from. It's got that sort of lip underneath. Just a sort of simple, um, you know, what's it called? Flat pack um, piece of furniture that I've got in here. That's where I got that idea from. So it maybe helps if it tur you turn it on the side like that. And then line up the short edge of your piece and then you can push the longer edge into position. Just covering up that line, so it's sitting just behind it, like that. You can still see it a little bit, but I want it to be covered, because obviously this is at a front edge that we'll be able to see. And then we're just going to attach this final side, so apply glue to all of these exposed edges. And the reason I've sort of made this into a little unit with a display area is because I just want to make so many um, miniatures to go inside this craft shed. And I said to you in the last video, I've got sort of two pages of a shorthand notebook full of things I want to make for this shed, so we'll need lots of um, display areas. I just wipe that with my finger, which you really shouldn't do. <laughs> if you do wipe glue on your finger, don't wait for it to dry. Um, and pick it off, just go and wash it off and I'll go and wash my hands once we finish this stage. So squeeze that side on and then you're just sort of peering inside and you're using those pencil lines again just to make sure that everything's staying where it should. Again so that plinth is just behind that little pencil mark there and hold it all together and you can hold it together until the glue begins to take. I've got a little bit of an overhang here on this shelf. That one's almost flush, so don't worry about that if you've got an overhang. We'll sand it all into a nice sort of flush square before we finish. You can press it onto your um, work surface and push it all down. That makes sure that it's all flat at the top. And then, again, I forgot to cut my masking tape before starting the construction. I always mean to just cut off a few strips so they're ready for this stage, but I always forget. So I'll just tear a few pieces off now. Bear with me for a moment. Like that. And then I'm just going to put a couple of pieces straight across like that as well, just to really hold it all together while the glue begins to set. So pull it quite firmly it over the back like that and I'll put another piece across that top edge like that and then that can just be left to one side to dry and when we come back we'll sand that on all edges to get a nice flush piece 
and then we can attach the top. Okay, so once the glue has set, you can remove um, the masking tape, and then I've sanded this on all sides, and I've done it off camera just because it makes a horrible sound, but basically have your sandpaper flat on your worktop, and then just go around in small circular motions, and you can do that on every edge on the bottom as well to make sure you've got a nice um, flat standing piece and then you can sand the sides and the back as well and that'll make a nice flush piece and then take your top piece and rather than just sticking it on with the straight edges I just want to very gently round over each edge so with a piece of fine grade sandpaper and I'm using a 500 just go along at a 45 degree angle along each edge of the wood and that will just very gently round it over you don't want to brand it over too much because it's just slightly bigger um, than the top so you don't want to make it any shorter you're just taking the square edges off each edge of that wood do it on both sides of the wood and you only need to do that on three edges so your two um, short edges and one long edge which will become the front edge so it's a small detail but it's just nicer than having just a really sort of straight or unfinished edge and then that can be attached to the top so apply glue to the top of the unit Oops. <laughs> and then you want your the flat unrounded edge to be level with the back of the unit or flush with the back of the unit so you can lay it down onto your work surface and push it down like that and you want an even overhang at each edge So press that down, so you've got a nice flush line along there, and don't press too hard because I've pressed like that before and I've sort of crushed the bottom of the piece, so always be aware kind of where you're pressing. <laughs> so apply pressure but not too much pressure. Remove any excess glue from around the edges, and it's always important to secure um, pieces together because already you can see that's trying to lift away there from the back so I've got some tape ready I'm going to put a piece right over the top like that and I've got a couple of pieces here that I'm going to put over the back pull it nice and tight and then at the front edge there I'm going to use a couple of clamps you can never sort of use too many clamps or tape because it's so important that pieces dry together sort of nice and tightly so like that that can be left to dry and then I shall remeasure the drawer opening and cut the pieces for the drawer okay so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry you can remove the masking tape and then I've just gently sanded that top piece again to remove the sort of pulls that the masking tape leaves and then I've remeasured the drawer opening and cut the pieces needed for the drawer. So to construct the drawer, begin by applying glue along each side of the base. Like so. Lay that on your surface and attach the side pieces. them in place you can just sort of carefully move that along um, the work surface in case it's sticking to the top there very carefully remove the excess glue and I am just going to let these dry off for a moment um, before I try attaching the front and back otherwise it will just collapse so once you've allowed enough time for that base piece to dry so you can handle it without it falling apart apply glue along the front and back edges so pop that back down on your work surface and then you can just press the front and back pieces into place making sure that those sides remain flush Like that as well, so you've got a nice sort of flush box piece. Press it all together. 
just really sort of carefully pick that up and manoeuvre it all into position. And then again, that can be left to dry and then we'll just give it a little sand before we attach the draw knob. Okay, so once I'd allowed enough time for the glue to completely dry on the draw, I sanded that on all um, sides, not too heavily, because if you've cut it um, exactly to fit, you might find too much sand, it'll make it too small and you'll have gaps at the top and the sides. So just a very gentle sand, and again, I did that going round in circular motions on bottom, top and on the sides. I'm now happy with the fit. Might mean you have to do a little bit of um, sort of fit and then sand and then fit it again just to get it fitting in there perfectly. And then I'm going to put a little um, 2.5mm draw knob um, in the centre there before I then um, use wood dye on the piece. If you want to use a little brass pull or another type of handle um, that doesn't need um, varnishing, then you can varnish it or wood dye it first, paint it first and then attach your handle. But in this case I'm going to attach it first. So I want to make a pencil mark in the centre of the draw front. So measure the draw width and then just do a little faint line in the centre there like that. And then turn it and find the centre that way. And do a little dot then. And then I just use a rubber to remove that line I made and you'll find that the dot stays there. And then I'm using, this is a 1.5mm uh, drill bit and I'm just using that, just very very um, gently drill into the drawer. Don't push or you might um, split the front of the drawer. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure, supporting the drawer with my little finger there, like that. And then, because the drill bit's a little bit smaller, I just twist it round like that. And that's so the hole then is, if I used a 2.5, it might be a little bit too big, um, just for the, the stem of the drawer knob there. So just check that it fits, like that, and then just apply a tiny little bit of glue with the end of your cocktail stick just into the hole like that and I'll just remove the excess there you'll need a little tiny bit and then just pop that into place make sure it's pushed flat into the hole like that you can sand away um, the wood that you pushed out with the drill on the back there. Just to be extra neat. And then just make sure no glue has sort of pushed out around the draw knob, otherwise the wood dial varnish, whatever you're using, won't take over the top of it. If you're using paint, that's fine, just sand as you normally would. And then I'll sand the draw front. glue left there and then we're ready to use the wood dye. Do have a look at my um, video about paint finishes um, or about wood finishes rather than the wood dye if you've not used that before. And there is the completed unit and I've just done one coat um, of the light oak wood dye on there because I want to keep it nice and light. A second coat would have made that considerably darker so I've just done the one coat on there. And I'm just going to pop that inside the craft shed and that's going to sit over there. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so please do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel as well because there's lots more to come. We'll be filling this little craft shed with furniture and accessories. There's going to be loads of videos for you to follow if you want to make your own little craft shed. Or you might want to make some of the things for other projects you've got on the go. 
lots of sort of craft craft supplies coming up. But like I say, do subscribe and do give me a thumbs up. And also, if you like making dolls house furniture and miniatures, you might want to have a look at my books. I've got four of them now. My latest book has just been released within the last couple of days. And I'll be adding a review of the book, um, a video review, to this channel as soon as I get my copy, which should be any day now. And I'll pop links to the books below. They're all available to purchase from Amazon. And do have a look as well at that um, video about using the wood die, because it really is a, a good sort of um, medium to use for finishing pieces with. And that video just shows you how easy it is to use. Okay, so thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.